Sawadika. Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So today I have yet another super addictive snack recipe to share with you. So this recipe, the inspiration came from this dim sum place in Bangkok. Some of you may remember I posted a video blog about it recently, and if you missed it, I will post a link right up here. One of the things they had on the menu, and one of the things they were famous for. Was these crispy tofu bites, and they were so simple yet so good. And a lot of you asked for a recipe for it, and I thought, you know what, this seems doable. So I gave it a try. I tweaked it several times, and now I think I finally got a really, really good recipe. So I'm ready to share it with you. Let's get started. Now the choice of tofu is pretty important. You want something that's soft, but I find soft or silken tofu is too hard to work with. So I think medium firm is perfect. And if you can get something that's called smooth tofu or medium firm smooth tofu, that's even better. It's got a nicer texture. And what I like to do is see how this part is not nice and squared. I trim that off and I save it to put into my smoothies. Soft tofu, like soft-ish tofu in smoothies, is perfect. So that then when I cut them, I get nice little cubes like this. I want to make sure the tofu itself has some flavor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak it in a soy sauce solution. So I'm going to cover it with water. Get in there, and then some soy sauce. And so this way, you make sure that all the tofu is. Equally seasoned. If you just put some soy sauce on it, all the soy sauce pulls out the bottom, and then the bottom will be really salty. So this, I find, is the most effective way. I'm just gonna let this sit for about 20 minutes. This matters to the size of your tofu. So at about 15 minutes, I'd probably give one a taste and see how it's where it's at. See if you need more time or if that's enough. Okay. So while that's soaking. I'm going to make all the seasoning bits that are around the tofu. So I've got some salt here, and for this, you want fine salt, so no kosher salt, no coarse salt, because that's just going to kind of fall off the tofu and it won't cling. I'm going to add just a little sugar to help balance the saltiness. I think that's the secret here. It's a little salty, a little sweet. That's when it's so addictive. And for a little heat, I'm going to add some white pepper, and I'm using ground white pepper, which is very fine. So it mixes in well with the seasoning, and that's it. It's super simple. I mean, if you want to spice this up, you can add five spice powder. That'll be really, really good as well. This is the next part. I'm gonna make some garlic and chilies, which we're gonna saute and then toss it together with the tofu, and it is going to put this dish over the top. So I've got here some garlic that I'm gonna crush, just so they're broken. But I don't want to chop them because I like the unevenness of the garlic, and that's it. You just want big, chunky bits of garlic so that you can eat pieces of garlic with the tofu. It's gonna be so good. This part is optional. If you don't want to make it spicy, you can omit it. But I'm going to add some sautéed chilies with the garlic, and I like to use the green uh, serrano. You can do jalapenos. Um, because it's not too spicy, so you can actually eat whole pieces of it, and it adds a nice color to it. And I'm just gonna do. <gasps> no, I'm not gonna use this knife. I'm gonna use my mini cleaver, and it will get thinner once you sauté it. So you, I like to do it a little thicker than I want it to be in the end. All right, so that can go in the same bowl as the garlic. And then one more thing I'm gonna add to this is some green onions. Now, cut the white part on a bias. And put that in with our garlic and chilies. Get that sautéed nice and soft because the white part is a little more pungent, right? So you don't want to eat that completely raw. And then the green part, I'll chop up and keep separate so that we can sprinkle it on at the end. This thing is incredibly sharp for something that looks kind of like a toy. Okay, let's see where our tofu is at. Again, you want to taste the tofu and make sure that it is seasoned. It should just be a little salty. Mmm, perfect. Now before I bread it, I'm gonna just drain all of this out first because I don't want it to keep sitting in there and getting saltier and saltier. So standard breading, many of you probably know, it's flour, egg, and breadcrumbs, right? I'm actually gonna skip the flour for this because I will double breadcrumb it, and the flour I find is not necessary, and it also makes it a little thicker than I like it. If you like a really thick coating, or if your tofu is bigger, then sure, you can definitely add the flour. It also makes the whole thing so much easier, right? So I've got an egg here that I've beaten quite well. Make sure there's no gloopy white streaks. But I'm gonna add just a splash of water because I find that it thins out the egg and it prevents those gloopy 
thick bits that then gums up your breadcrumb and whatever. Yeah, there we go. So for this, I am using fine breadcrumbs. So this is Western style breadcrumbs. So don't get uh, panko or Asian style breadcrumbs. It's gonna, you know, it'll be a different look. The, the smooth look is what we're going for here. Season this a little with black pepper. I just find that it creates some specks of black pepper, which makes it look extra delicious. And if you can't find fine breadcrumbs, you can definitely dry the bread and blitz it in a food processor yourself at home. That's all this is anyway. My only trick for you is keep your wet hand wet and keep your dry hand dry. That's how you prevent gunky hands at the end of the day. And then make sure you don't have any dripping bits of egg before you put it in the breadcrumb because that's gonna drip in the breadcrumbs and then it gums it up and you end up wasting a lot of breadcrumb that way. Into the breadcrumb and right away, you want to toss it in the breadcrumbs. And like that, that's code number one. It's very thin, we're gonna do this twice. <sighs> okay, so I actually did two different batches. One where I floured egg and breadcrumb, just to show you the difference at the end. You might not be able to see it, but anyway, I just did it for experiments. Um, but now I have to coat it again with the eggs and breadcrumbs because this breadcrumb is so fine that you actually need the two coating. So even if you did flour it, you still need the double coating of the egg and breadcrumbs, okay? So now I've got some frying oil in here. I'm gonna wait till it gets to 350. These will literally take one minute to brown and you don't wanna fry it any longer than that. The tofu is already cooked, so you're just trying to get the outside to brown. If, it take, if you leave it there too long, what could happen is it builds up so much pressure inside and it breaks the shell. I usually end up with like four pieces per batch that ends up breaking and you'll be able to hear it as soon as it breaks. It'll go bing, 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 bing because the water from the tofu comes out. Um, so if that happens, just find the culprit and fish it out. Woohoo! So I just finished frying. I just want to show you the differences real quick of what happened here. So this is the one that I did not flour. It's got a nice coating on it, but it's it's a thinner, softer coating. This is the one that I did flour. It's a firmer, thicker coating. So at the end of the day, I guess it depends on what you like, but I'll show you this. This is what I'm talking about. Look at this one. Look how crazy this is. This completely just spat out the tofu from its shell and there's a complete shell and the tofu that just came out. This has never happened to me before. It's just really funny. Um, I'm guessing this is the thin bit. A few others broke but didn't come out. So this happens, you know, occasionally. I've got a couple of pieces like that. Um, I find that the ones with the flour will not break as easily because the coating is thicker but then but then I prefer the thinness of this kind of coating. So, you know, you just kind of choose your battle, right? All right, we're almost done. I've got a wok here with just a little bit of oil in it. This right here is the icing on the cake, I'm telling you. Oh, also, I wanna add a few pieces of red peppers just for color. You don't have to if you don't have any. And I'm gonna keep the heat pretty low so that the garlic can have time to soften um, before it starts browning. And you just want enough oil to lubricate it because we're gonna toss the tofu with all of this. So you don't wanna get it any oilier than it needs to be, okay? <coughs> Once you start to smell chilies in the air, you've got some brown nice bits on the garlic. The garlic looks translucent. I'm gonna turn off the heat and give the tofu a toss in with all of this good stuff. Woohoo! And this is why you don't really want it oily, but I do want, because there's so much flavorful oil in that pan, I do want the tofu to sort of like rub against it and, um, and get some of that flavor on it. Now, the seasoning. I don't want to toss it in here because the pan is really oily. If I sprinkle all the sugar and salt in here, it's all gonna get stuck to the pan and like nothing will go onto the tofu. So I actually want to move it into a mixing bowl Give it a sprinkle, and I'll do most of it, but not everything, and then give it a quick toss. It's also much easier to toss in a bowl than in the wok. Woohoo! And then the green onions go in. Does that look like a party or what? Wah! Oops. And that's it! There's your party snack! You know, one thing you'll have a hard time with is stopping yourself from eating it all before you plate it. <laughs> 
So the secret is I want to arrange the tofu on the plate first before I put all the little bits, leave the little bits on top so people can see it. Oh, yeah. That's like the icing on the cake. All right, so the trick with this is you actually, you definitely want a piece of garlic or chili or one of these topping things on the piece of tofu. Oh, that smell is so good. Mm. It's so munchy. The coating doesn't actually become like crispy, crispy but it's just enough of a crust to contrast the creaminess of the tofu and that garlic. Oh my God, that garlic. And it's salty, it's sweet. It's not too salty, which is dangerous because that means you can really just kind of go crazy on it. Like I have a really hard time stopping these. And these are vegetarian, so it's definitely a great, great party snack. It's a little bit of work with the breading. You know how I feel about breading and skewering and things like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a pain, but at the end, it is so, so worth it. So the recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. When you make it, send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. If you love the show and you'd like to support us, check out the Patreon link in the description below, and I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal. This is what makes this dish nice and rustic. Oh, suddenly my... <laughs>